Welcome back to the channel guys. So the Flamingos of Nigeria defeated Dominican Republic one go to zero early hours of today. Uh it was actually played around twelve AM this morning and uh you know of course as as we expected our girls came out victorious for that game. To be honest, I was a little bit surprised that we only were able to convert just one goal because uh the statistics you know it's just crazy we had over 41 shots uh, with 13 on targets uh against as against dominican republic who had only three shots and just one on target and uh possession wise it was a complete uh disgrace we had over 73 possessions uh, of the game that's against 27 of the dominican cyber 1-0 was enough to get the three points, which is the most important thing, and that means that we've now uh, placed ourselves in this in the quarterfinals where we'll be playing the likes of USA, who were the second runners up in the uh, in the Group B, uh, which is a little bit scary because USA is obviously a strong team, but then if you weigh the chat, the you know the options that we have. Or that we had in that group B, we had Spain who are uh, cruising, you know, with maximum points in that group, and then the second one out being USA. So I think it's probably better that we start with USA and then uh, play our way, you know, further the further the competition. If we progress and do really well, then uh, obviously we might still have to play Spain somewhere in the semi-finals or finals. Because of course, uh, Spain are really, really good. They're actually one of the favorites for this competition. But if we, if we are going to win this this competition, we, we should be ready to play even the, the toughest opponent in the group. But great one for the girls, and uh, the goal actually came from uh, Moshud, who continues to be a key figure for these girls in this tournament. She is, uh, she's actually. The, the highest goal scorer for this competition so far with four goals and one assist and uh you know she just gives me the hope you know for the future for the for the super far connect with the way she plays she's actually been able to score you know at least one goal in every of the group stages games that we played and uh, just so nice to see uh, she also set a record in the first game against new zealand where she scored uh just after two minutes of you know the start of the game uh but it's just so nice of course to see someone coming up the ranks and people are already tipping her to be the next assistant to shawla and it's not surprising because of how talented she is you know with her left foot but uh good one for the girls and uh, as i mentioned we have a date against usa and that game is coming up on saturday that's the semi-finals Sorry, the quarterfinals of this FIFA Women's Under-17 World Cup. Uh, but aside from that, we also had, uh, you know, the Champions League games yesterday where we saw Samuel Chukwese uh, actually turning up again for his AC Milan side. This time he started from the bench uh, to, you know, to come in and bring an assist for this AC Milan side. It was a really, really fiery game uh you know which also involved uh another super egos combative midfielder uh rafael Nedica, who unfortunately got a red card you know for club bridge in the 40th minute which was uh the turnaround for that game it was actually when uh the game went one-sided and then milan started you know pressing and exploiting uh this club bridge size to end up winning in a 3-1 uh you know victory over club bridge at home uh again questions will be asked of rafael nedica uh who has now gotten two red cards uh this season alone which is obviously not what we like to see uh because he put his team in a really difficult situation and of course you recall the last time he got a red card uh which was actually recently uh you know a few weeks ago his teammates were not very happy with it. They were very critical about it. Even his coach, you know, had some 
hint in his uh, in his remark after the game that was pointing to the fact that he was the, the reason that they didn't get the result that they wanted. And again, he gets this red card yesterday to uh, to put them at a disadvantage. On whether it was a deserved uh, red card for me, I felt it was a really really deserved one because that challenge was such a reckless challenge uh, on. Uh, Tijani Rangers uh, in the 40th minute, so you know definitely he deserved that red card for being so reckless with the challenge. But again, uh, they are going to, however it is, try and you know move past this, keep their heads up, and uh, go again next time. But speaking of the Champions League, we also have the likes of Bayern Leverkusen who will be uh, playing their Champions League games to yeah, game today. Uh, they actually have a game uh, today against Brest and unfortunately Victor Boniface didn't travel for that game because of his injury you know that he sustained from the car crash and as a result Xavi Alonso has moved to replace Boniface with another Nigerian another player of Nigerian descent uh, by the name Francis Ikechuku Onyeka uh, he's actually a German Nigerian player. He's eligible to play for Nigeria, also eligible to play for Germany. Uh, but his formative years, you know, uh, age grade football had always been within Germany. But this man is the man that's going to replace Victor Boniface. He's very young and uh, could possibly make his debut for uh, UCL tonight. Boniface continues to recover, uh, you know, from his injury and uh where he was hit hard was on his arm which uh you know which was bleeding and uh, he probably maybe have a few concussion to the head because of that but uh the coach feels that it's it's only not normal for him to rest you know a few days before he comes back onto the pitch but we'll see what happens uh later tonight and of course uh there's also an update uh regarding uh chudera educate who sadly has now been confirmed by Sevilla that his hamstring injury, which he uh, which he got from the last weekend game in the La Liga against Barcelona, uh, is actually a serious injury. And Sevilla has now confirmed that the injury is going to take him maybe up to three months for him to completely recover. And that effectively rules him out, you know, of playing time throughout this year so we are expecting him to come back next year 2025 and that means that he's not going to be available for nigerian to play those uh, november uh, run of games for the african qualifiers which demand all the best and uh, quick recovery there's also uh, a gist concerning uh, fast growing Nigerian Zubaygo's midfielder, Kisanzo Suche, who currently plays for Getafe. The 21-year-old is uh, now under the radar of Chelsea Football Club, who are interested in uh, signing the man in the future. You know, the report now is that Chelsea scouts have now started having a, a serious look in on this young, uh, strong midfielder as a you know potential signature for their future plan but we'll see how that goes it's, of course it's still a long way for him to actually you know become a Chelsea player and we know the thing with Chelsea it just feels like they want to buy everybody you know anybody that's uh, doing well they want to just go on and get that person but we'll see what happens over the next coming transfer uh, season that's the update guys, thanks for watching this one, uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned.